Hi everyone, the purpose of this video is to review what an array is and use arrays to help us find factors of various numbers. So let's review with what is an array. Well, an array is a rectangular arrangement that groups objects into equal groups. So I have an example here of soup cans. We've got soup cans in the shape of a rectangle. If you see the outside shape is a rectangle. Now in order to find out how many soup cans there are without counting by ones, it's real easy. We figure out the dimensions. We're going to figure out how many cans are in each column and each row. So if we count the columns, we have one, two, three soup cans. So the dimension for this side is three. If we count the rows, we have one, two rows. So the dimensions are 3 by 2 or 3 times 2. And we know that 3 times 2 equals 6. So how can we use this to draw arrays? I noticed that some of you were having trouble on your um, classwork in actually getting the arrays drawn. So let's say you wanted to draw an array for the problem 4 times 5. That means we need either 4 rows or 4 columns and then 5 rows or 5 columns, vice versa. 1 has to be 4, 1 has to be 5. So I'm going to draw a box. One side is going to be a little bit longer than the other one because one side is going to have 5 and the other side is going to have 4. So here's my rectangle because when we're working with arrays we're always working with the rectangular shape. Now I want to have this be the side that has a dimension of 5 and this one be the side that has the dimension of 4 because this side's longer than this side and you can tell that by looking at it. So one trick that I've found is that if I want five columns it means I actually have to draw four lines and watch what happens when I do that because I'm drawing one less so here's one line that creates one box and then I have an extra box here that I'm still going to divide up. We've got two lines one two and then we've got this three here so now I draw my third line and my fourth line. So I have one, two, three, four, five boxes. Now I'm just going to adjust these because they don't really look even yet. Some of the square rectangles are bigger than others so I'm just going to slide these down to make them look like they're about even. So now I have one, two, three, four, five columns. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw three lines because I have four boxes over here so I'm going to do one less so here's one here's two and here's three and notice I've got one two three four boxes so this array is four times five or five times four because multiplication is reversible because of the commutative property um, so now that we've reviewed how to make arrays, I want to take this a step further and give you some numbers that you have to find all the possible arrays for. So how do you do that? Well, we're going to be using a piece of graph paper and you can see the boxes are already designed. Now the number that we're going to work with is 12. When I have a number, any number, I can always do 1 times that number, 1 group of 12. So in order to do that, I'm going to count how many boxes that I need. I need 1 going down, and then I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 going over. Let me just make sure that I have the right number before I draw the rest of my lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I do, so I can go ahead and I can draw in the rest of the boxes. So here I have an array that has a dimension of 1 
on this side, 12 on this side. So let's say you're stuck and you're not sure other numbers to try. One thing that I would recommend doing is starting with the lowest number and working your way up. You know that it's going to be all the numbers in between 1 and 12 are available to try. So the next number you want to try is 2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count by twos to see if I can land on 12. So I'm going to put a smiley face in this box. 1, 2. Now those are my two right there. So now I'm going to go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at that. It's a perfect rectangle. So that tells me I can use the factor of 2 to create an array for 12. So what are the dimensions? Well, I've got 1, 2 on this side. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on this side. So the dimensions for this one are 2 times 6. Okay, so now let's try again. I tried the number 1. I've tried the number 2 and they both worked. Let's try the number 3. This time I'm going to pick flowers. So I'm going to count by 3 to see if I can make a rectangle that equals 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at that. It worked. So now I've got another array. I'm going to draw my box around it. And now I'm going to figure out the dimensions. So I have 1, 2, 3 on this side. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4 on this side. So now we've tried the number 1, the number 2, the number 3, and we're up to number 4. Well, I already know that 4 is a factor because I did 3 times 4. And because multiplication has the commutative property, that means that you can basically swap your numbers around. So if I take this array right here and I turn it like this, it's the same thing. So I know that I have all the factors because I've met in the middle. All the numbers have met in the middle. So let me show you what I mean by they've met in the middle. I have all of the factors that I had listed on this page right here. Let me just move this one down. Okay, so now we can do the split screen between the two. So I know that I had uh, 1 times 12, which can be flipped around to 12 times 1. And then I have 2 times 6, which is my smiley face. And that can be flipped around to 6 times 2. And then I have 3 times 4. It's not very easy to write with this mouse. And 4 times 3. So now I want to show you what we talked about in class the other day about the upside down rainbow. That's a way that you can keep track to know that you have all the factors. Let me slide these guys up here. So we started with the number 1 and then we put the number 12 on the other side. So I have an 1 and the number 12. Then we tried the number 2. And on this side, we had 6, because it was 2 times 6. So now to keep the rainbow going, I'm using this rainbow color. And now I had, I did 6. So uh, 1, 2, so the next one's 3. And then over here is 4. And there's no more numbers between 3 and 4, so that tells me that I found all the factors of 12. Now, today in class, you guys are going to be working on finding factors of various numbers. Now, there could be a time when you're counting off, and maybe it doesn't make a rectangle. If that's the case, it means it's not a rec it's not an array or a factor of the number that you're trying. So let me give you an example. 
let's say that we're trying to find the factors of the number, oops, let's get rid of that pen, that crazy pen. Let's say we're trying to find the factors of the number um, 21. And I try 1 and 21 because I know that works. So the next logical number that I would try is going to be the next logical number that I'm going to try would be 2. So let me get a large grid paper. Alright, so let's say I'm going to use the stars this time. And I'm going to make groups of 2 to try and get to 21. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Mm, it's not a rectangle. Look at the shape it makes. It's got this extra one that kind of hangs off the edge. So it is not a factor because it does not make a perfect rectangle like we had with our problems back here. These are perfect rectangles. There's nothing extra hanging out. So if you try one that doesn't make a perfect rectangle, like this one right here where we had the factor where we're trying to find the factors of 21 and I counted by twos that means two is not a factor so you just tried it alright great move on to the number three and then keep going four five six seven eight nine ten until they meet in the middle and that is how you find factors using arrays so now it's your turn find all the possible factors for the numbers by creating the arrays for each 16 and 24. Good luck!